when, like when you went into therapy mm-hmm. or when a client comes to see you, what, what process are you going through to kind of take them through this journey to get from not knowing or understanding their subconscious to being able to elaborate like mm-hmm. what you just elaborated to me? Like somebody comes in, you've never met them, they sit down. Where, so, where do you like go? I said, when people come to like or sign up for therapy or start therapy, ninety nine percent of the time it's like, I this is a problem, yeah, right? this is the problem. So I'll give you an example. Um, let, let's say somebody comes to me and they're like, I am so anxious about what I eat all the time. I right. which is like I don't have a like you. This person doesn't quote unquote have an eating disorder, but their obsession with what they eat, how much they eat, counting calories, needing to work out a certain amount every day, like it's debilitating for their life. Right. Right. And so they want to do something about that. Well, we could sit there and be very tactile and be like, okay, like I need you to just, you know, one day a week, let's not count calories. Right. And just see how you feel. Like we could do these very specific things to try and like get them out of that habit. Or you can say, okay, what about your identity is so wrapped up in your body image? What about your, like, what taught you that your the way that you look is the most important thing in the world, right? Like, right. who told you that? And usually it comes down to, like, mom or dad were really self-conscious about their bodies, and then they made comments about me gaining weight, and then I realized that that was such an important thing, and I now think about that all the time, yeah. right? And so being able to dig into like the very specifics of Mm -hmm. where, well, where is that coming from? Right. And then when you work with somebody long enough, you realize these patterns, um, that like they keep bringing them up. Like, like for instance, that at the end of the day, that's about control, right? Right. That I want to be able to control how people view me. I want to be able to control, um, my, that's a really interesting point. Yeah. Like I want to be able to, like, if I, like, being a good person or being loved or whatever is associated with the way that I look like that is kind of like the way that they are viewing the world. And so if I can control how I looked, I can control who loves me and that I will be loved. That will be confirmed. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a control. um, It's a means of controlling something you're afraid of. Right. Right. Which I don't talk about anything else more than control. Like everything that, I talk about in therapy with people and in my own therapy is about, I am afraid of losing control of this, like, or this is why I want to control this. Are most of people's issues, and this is might be a loaded question, are most of people's issues driven from fears that then lead them to want to control things in sometimes unhealthy ways? Or is that, is is that too broad? What do you mean? Well, like if I'm an alcoholic, is it because maybe, uh, yeah, as we take our sips of whiskey, um, if I'm an alcoholic, maybe like I've heard people say, um, I feel like people like me better when I'm like drinking cause I'm mm-hmm. funnier, I'm looser mm-hmm. or I've heard alcoholics say this. Um, and so I started drinking more because I was looser and I thought people liked me when I was well, funny that's... and then I couldn't quit because, um, yeah. well, like I'll give you an example. Um, Jason Isabel, who's a really incredible singer songwriter. Mm -hmm. Um, he was an alcoholic and he said in an interview that he was terrified when he quit drinking, that he might not be able to write good songs anymore. So he has like a whole song about that literally tells me that has told me that. Um, So is that how much is control driving bad or the, the desire to control how people feel about you and your image driving people's actions? Uh, it might be an impossible question. No, I, I see what you're saying. So it's so this is a very loaded question because alcoholism or addiction in general has its own voice, right? So the reality is not that, oh, I drink because it makes me feel like people like me more. I drink because people like me more when I'm drunk, right? Like, right. which is what you just said. The, the reality, that's what the alcohol, al, what, that's what the addiction says to you. Keep drinking because people like you more when you're drunk. But the reality is I want to keep drinking because it's make, it's my medicine. Like I'm, it's my coping mechanism for like my anxiety, my depression, whatever is really going on. Right. right. Like, so being able to justify the drinking with 
oh, people like me. Like I'm a better version of myself when I do this is literally the explanation that your mind is telling you to keep you drinking. That's literally what addiction is. Okay. But the reality behind that is you really like drinking because alcohol is literally one of your best friends. Like you've created this wiring in your head that, okay, I have anxiety or I don't feel good about myself or I hate myself or whatever. And I drink to cope with that. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that, is that what you were asking? Yeah, I think so. Um, 